Hello, everyone. Well, scientific journals have, have established strong research on how the gut's second brain influences mood and well being. There is scientific evidence to show that many chronic metabolic diseases do originate from our gut. We are going to talk about how Ayurveda can help with the healing process of our gut health. I am Amita from Nourish Dog, a platform for natural, holistic, and integrative therapies. Presenting this topic, we have a world-renowned speaker, Vedya Jay Parla. Vedya Jay is a professor of Ayurvedic medicine and a Nama registered practitioner with more than 20 years of experience. He is chair of department Ayurvedic medicine at American University of Complementary Medicine, Beverly Hills, California. Vedya Jay also holds a master's in Ayurvedic medicine, master's in acupuncture and oriental medicine, and he's a certified yoga teacher. Well, we can spend the whole one hour talking about his qualifications. <laughs> Welcome, Vedya Jay Ji. Namaste, thank you. Amit Ji for having uh, me on your platform. Um, I, I think that uh, this is a huge topic, but we will make it as simple as possible so that there are take home points for all our listeners. Great. So let's um, start with um, the Ayurvedic perspective of gut health and what are the medical conditions that, that originate from gut as well. Okay. So there is a lot of information out there. It is easy to be get, you know, overwhelmed with all the information now. And another layer of Ayurvedic information is coming to our listeners uh, about how to take care of their gut. Uh, what I want to you know, uh, tell our listeners is that uh, Ayurveda is not a rocket science where you need to learn about molecules and, and enzymes and all that, but it is uh, more a science of uh, you know, common sense. Um, so if you have a good common sense, you can make out what is good for you and what helps your gut and what uh, you know, can promote your well-being. So having said that, uh, we have heard this common notion that uh, we are what we eat. Uh, that's just uh, a very small, uh, you know, uh, um, paradigm. But what Ayurveda says is even in a larger sense, the health is dependent on just not what you eat, but it also depends on what you digest and what you assimilate is what is important because that's the key factor. If you eat something that's really good, let's talk about like superfood. Somebody eats, uh, you know, like um, uh, spirulina or, uh, you know, even like um, um, beetroot extract or something like that, which are now considered to be superfoods. And if they don't digest, if they don't break it down and assimilate into the body, then the same substance can be uh, detrimental or can tax the, the uh, gut. So that's where we are gonna start with. We are gonna make sure that whatever we are consuming is broken down in the body in a very systematic fashion, and then we assimilate it. Because Ayurveda says that if you take anything um, from the um, external environment, uh, which is you know, com coming in the form of food major, uh, the food has to be broken down into body elements. So the nature's elements are need to be made into body elements. What is the intermediate factor here is the digestion, is what we call as Agni. Later in this presentation, we're gonna talk a lot about this Agni, which is part of our common sense phenomena that we will use how to use this uh, Agni for our health and well-being. So just not what we eat, what we digest. So look at what we eat nowadays, see? Uh, we, we, we eat some things that are really, uh, you know, not meant for our guts to be handled. The, the current studies show that we have about 87,000, you know, additives that can be, that is allowed by the food, and, uh, food administration to be consumed. We don't know what are their long-term benefits, I mean, benefits or, you know, side effects. We have to be very careful what we are ingesting so like, look, uh, you know, for example, in this, uh, uh, you know, the, the, have, all of you have seen the, the movie of King Kong. The King Kong was killed not by the planes, but, all, but by the cupcakes that it consumed. 
So if King Kong cannot break it down what we are eating, we can think about how our guts are being extremely challenged by our diet. So next slide. So what we see, this is uh, in my observation, also a population study in the US, uh, you know, um, uh, general population that we see. Um, we are looking at, uh, uh, you know, unprecedented amount of digestive issues. That's because it, what we are consuming and the state in which we are consuming, and then how we respect and have an attitude towards food. So I want to tell all of our listeners here, Ayurveda is, telling you what type of attitude you should have towards your food so that your gut is more healthier because of your attitude towards food. And also how you should be mindful in carefully you know, crafting what you need for balancing your gut because every person's diet is not the same. From Ayurvedic point of view, each person is unique. Every person is unique and they have to cater to that uniqueness. And that's the speciality of Ayurvedic uh, you know, principles of uh, gut health. Okay, so here we have uh, the, the the general population diseases. We see GERD, which is a very very common you know gut condition. They say that the total burden of um, the gastrointestinal disorders in the U.S. population is more than the heart disease and uh, you know stroke etc. Because there's so many people depending on uh, either you know over the counter medications or prescription medications for these conditions. So gut uh, being you know, irritated by acid, acid reflux, H. pylori, because you become a host for organisms because you're not assimilating food uh, and the food becomes abundant uh, and something else has to consume it. So your own organisms will become more predominant. In a, in, a, in a minute, we'll talk about the gut biome. It'll make sense what happens to the gut biome when we consume something that's not broken down and assimilated by our body, like H. pylori, hiatal hernia, SIBO, that's also another condition, travels diarrhea, IBS, leaky gut syndrome, Crohn's disease, hemorrhoids, and parasites. These are the common things that we, as Ayurvedic practitioners, see uh, people seek out for our health. And we will be able to do this with very simple, mindful, and, and you know, uh, techniques that we can teach our um, um, you know, clients. Next slide, please. So what we learn in um, the current day, you know, nutrition, diet, gut health, you know, paradigm is that we are looking at uh, truth, but it is a partial truth. I have a, a very famous uh, analogy that, you know, comes along in Indian, uh, you know, um, folklore uh, that for, uh, you know, um, blind people heard that there is a, a elephant, an elephant in the town, and they all go to check out what this elephant looks like. And then one stands at the tail, another one stands at the leg, another one uh, at, the, at the belly, and the last one near the ears. Each one of them think that one, uh, you know, uh, they get a vision of this elephant. One uh, imagines that it is a big fan going back and forth who's standing near the ear. The one who's near the tummy says that it's like a boulder which is just sticking out. Another one thinks it's a pillar who's standing at the leg. The last one who's standing at the, at the tail thinks that it is like a broom. So each one of them is true. It's not that they are not speaking the truth. They are speaking partial truth. So that's what happens when we get into um, like, you know, um, nutrition and gut health because of um, um, some kind of, you know, this um, mindset that these your, micronutrients, uh, I can take my- uh, that the, yeah. Jay, your, your voice somehow, we lost your voice. Okay. Uh, is now it now visible? Now, now yes, audible? Yes. Yes, uh, yes, sometimes just if, somebody, if a participant is using a microphone, using a microphone. No, no, they, they're all off. It's a webinar, okay. so. Okay. Sorry. okay, no worries. So wh what I was saying is, so when we uh, resort to this, um, you know, like uh, micronutrients or micro, uh, you know, um, enzymes, such things will only a partial truth to uh, gut health. So what we need to look at is the gut as a entire uh, you know, mechanism that Ayurveda has been insisting for thousands of years that we should not just look at one aspect of the gut. Even when we look at the word gut, it's a very interesting thing. In uh, you know, modern uh, you know, uh, you know, dictionaries, when you see gut, gut re relates to gastro and entero. So gastro in the sense upper GI, and entero means lower GI, they are all connected in one, one um, terminology called gut. 
But for Ayurveda, it is sub two separate entities. There is an entity that is in the gut, which is clearly separating the, the I mean, breaking down the nutrients, absorbing the, the nutrients from the gut, and then you know, uh, pushing it towards the elimination. And once it comes into elimination, there is another entire different process where the gut, uh, the, the uh, lower part of the GI concentrates on the waste product. So there's a nutrient product uh, you know, uh, aspect of the gut. And there is also the uh, waste product of the gut. For I, Ayurveda, it is very important. If you do not differentiate between what is waste and what is nutrition, sometimes you absorb what is waste, like in leaky gut syndrome, you know, people absorb what is not required for them. So that clear differentiation that there is two different aspects of the gut is also very key uh, factor of Ayurvedic, um, uh, you know, uh, gut health and nutrition. Next slide, please. So let's see that this is a, a interesting thing uh, that I see a lot of uh, our, we ourselves do it, our clients will do it. Let's say that this is you know uh, your mom and uh, uh, your mom comes on Sunday, I mean Monday morning with this hairstyle and says, "Good morning, how are you? Uh, get up, get up, it's time to go to school or get to go to work." And then and then Tuesday she has a different hairstyle, Wednesday she has a different hairstyle, Thursday, Friday, Saturday she will have these different hairstyles. Uh, what would you do? What would what would happen to you? Is a total confusion, right? You don't know how to relate your mom. So Ayurveda says that food is like your mother, and it needs to be kept in a very um, defined fashion. Like one day if you eat Mexican food, another day if you eat Thai food, the third day if you go for um, like a, you know a American food, like a burger, then the 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 body uh, you know mechanism of breaking down digestion and metabolism and assimilation will be so challenged that there is uh, a burden on this aspect called Agni. In a minute, we'll talk about that. So when we talk about gut health, always talk about right choices, not to change the diet rapidly. Ayurveda says that the, the diet needs to be changed only based on the season not according to what your emotions are saying, not according to your you know, cravings, never do that because that is the disease manuf man manufacturing that's happening. The disease will ask for these because it is trying to create an imbalance. So always educate and be having, I mean, have mindfulness of not to get tempted because of taste and texture, rather go with seasonal diet and body type diet. That's very important for from Ayurvedic point of view. Next slide, please. So let's look, let's look at what Ayurveda considers this digestive and metabolism as. It elevates the um, you know, thought process or mindful you know, attitude towards food as a sacrifice, right? We call in, in Vedic terms, it's called as yajna. Yajna means um, you know, it's a process where a certain chosen substances are offered. The word offered is very important. So it's offering, right? Not just throwing or burning, it's offering. So this word yajna means a sacrificial uh, offering. So Ayurveda says that the attitude that one should have towards this uh, you know, consuming food should be like a sacred offering. And the, the and later part, you know, we were, you know, in the um, the classical, you know, Indian or Vedic literature, we say that even the internal metabolic, uh, you know, uh, ability of a human being is compared to the 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 consciousness itself, the 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 spiritual ultimate, you know, consciousness exists in the form of this uh, metabolic fire. So there is a sentence. It goes, "Aham vaishvanaro bhutva." So in, in if you, those of you who have heard of uh, Bhagavad Gita, in Bhagavad Gita, you, you know, the, the, the sentence that has been said is the sacrificial fire that you have in your belly is the form of the consciousness itself. So that is the attitude that all of us will, should have to have a good gut. Because if you relate your gut as if it is a sacred, you know, sacred place, then you will never put junk into it. Next slide, please. And it says that this yajna, the external sacrifice that's doing, like, like for example, yajna is seen as a sun as well. Sun is continuously burning and uh, 
and uh, uh, combusting himself to eliminate to, to emit light so that's seen as a yagna as well so, so where there is you know you know um, purpose for this combustion or purpose for this metabolism or breaking down is what we relate to yagna in a larger sense the yagna in an internal or personalized sense is the yagna that we do by eating so what are we doing in this yagna is that we take the elements we have in ayurveda five elements that is everybody knows about this there is space from where everything manifests then becomes subtle as air then the fire then the water then the most grossest being the earth right so these five are considered to be existing outside and then we are continuously conveying that through the food into our bodies to maintain our body so these five elements is what we recycle all life long from birth to death that's what we are doing and what is making it possible is this internal yagna internal you know sacrifice sacrifice that we are doing who is responsible for that the sacred fire next slide please so then the agni that we were so talking right the same word agni is coming uh, from the uh, sanskrit uh, san and from sanskrit it uh, gradually went into like roman and 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 uh, and um, uh, even uh, to to modern me medical system and uh, you know uh, physics ignite ignitious comes from the same uh, the root word agni agni is the eternal fire the eternal fire that is responsible for all transformations fruit ripening in the tree um, you know things like that anything that is transforming is done by this um the form of uh, creation called as agni so this agni very interestingly is says in vedas they say that chatvari shringaha that means four horns the representation right and then um, trayo asya padaha three legs uh, then sapta hastaso asya uh, seven hands dva shirshe two heads rushabo roraditi it just continues as a, 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 a him but what is interesting is that four horns are the four seasons uh, we are, from ayurvedic point of view you can draw meanings according to the context seven hands are the seven tissues that we have three legs vata pitta kapha so if we know how to maintain the agni in our bodies then the agni can nurture us like a sect you know uh, the sacred fire that is out there if not then it will destroy us being taking a abnormal form next slide please the concept of agni is actually very important and the comment that you made earlier like you know if you have one day mexican food the other day thai food but that's all what we are to trying to do <laughs> you know so it takes <laughs> a lot of discipline right <laughs> yeah so what what we do is that you know we uh, fall for our emotions ayurveda is very very um, aware of that because emotions are the ones which are driven by the mind and state of mind and they make body a culprit of choosing these and then destroying itself so we need to be very mindful of that now continuing we are you know looking at what this internal agni relates to in our bodies that is so important for our not only gut health but also general health so we have uh, uh, 13 varieties of agni in ayurveda that means the en entire body metabolism is grouped under one heading called agni which is transforming everything for convenience and also for therapeutic purposes we have divided it into 13 you know subcategories the major one which is responsible for gut health is called jatara agni jatara means that which is located in the gi the gut uh, so that transformative agni which can be you can say it's a very broad term hydrochloric acid yes it's agni how about gut biome it's agni how about the enzymes it's agni how about the peristalsis it's agni all that is grouped under one heading whatever makes our bodies metabolism possible is called as agni so that's in the gut that is the major one and then we have seven in the tissues there are seven tissues in ayurveda one is the lymph the blood the muscle the fat the bone bone marrow reproductive tissues and and these seven of them together have their own uh, you know transformative fires in them those are also important 
if you break down something in the gut, if it doesn't break down in the tissues, that also is, a not, is not a proper metabolism according to Ayurveda. Then the last five are located in the tissues, uh, and the, the, not on the tissues, the elements. So we talked about these five elements, like you know, beginning I said, what we are doing is essentially recycling the material from the nature and they are in five uh, elemental forms. They are, these are five elements, that is the uh, fire, the water, the, the earth, the space and the air, these have their own elemental you know, um, uh, transformations. And these are 13 of them in for Ayurveda, all these are important. Today for the gut purposes, we are only gonna talk about the, the GI based major, um, you know, again, next slide please. So what happens if we are very mindful and have a great attitude towards our food? That type of food, Ayurveda classifies it as patya. Patya means pate hitam miti patyam, yadruchyam manasaha priyam. That means the, the food that is, um, you know, broken down and moves through the body without any hindrance, right? So body is so designed, this ancient uh, Acharyas knew so well that nothing in the body can stagnate. Majorly the food, the nutrition that we are taking, if it stagnates, then it will clog the body ch channels, starting from the micro minute channels uh, to the major you know, organ systems. So they said that if the wholesome food needs to be chosen mindfully, then it should be something that is um, going through the body, like the channels, major is the gut, then the secondary channels that are going towards the tissues, tertiary channels that are going towards the elements, everything should be properly, you know, um, uh, patent, kept patent, open. So that type of a food is called as patya. It should be also pleasing to the mind. You know, food should not be like we think sometimes, oh, the food that is really healthy should be bland. And no, I would say six taste needs to be taken to make the food wholesome. Right. So, the, and again, uh, food needs to be digested. Food needs to be absorbed. So it needs to be the waste needs to be eliminated. If these three processes, the take-home point from our discussion, if you eat something or if you if you suggest something to your you know uh, clients, if you help them to digest, that's one step. Then you need to help them absorb and and then make sure that it is eliminated. All these processes make something wholesome. This is very, uh, you know, it's like a, the crux of Ayurvedic, um, you know, diet and gut health. Next slide, please. What will be the outcome? Ayurveda in, in the Ashtanga Hridayam, uh, the textbook, uh, they say that the food that is consumed based on patya, so it, it becomes wholesome. Um, like you're chosen the food according to your body type, you're chosen uh, food according to the season, uh, food according to the six days, uh, all this you're paying attention and you're, you're you know, choosing diligently, then that type of a food will go through nourishing every aspect of your body, makes the gut very rich and very, uh, you know, like uh, um, um, abundant with what it needs uh, to thrive, to, to support the health. And then it uh, makes the prana. So there are two types of prana sources. Uh, one coming from the breath. We know that in yoga, we clearly understand the prana comes from the breath. Another one is from Ayurvedic point of view, the prana also comes from food. So if the food is wholesome, it will harvest in, I mean, rich amount of prana from the food. Second thing, the ojas, the immunity that is uh, you know, supporting, especially gut immunity. A lot of people have gut immunity compromised. That's, uh, you know, we can see people with gas, bloating to people having, you know, higher in more advanced uh, conditions such as uh, malabsorption to uh, inflammatory bowel disease, etc. That is because their immunity inside the gut itself is compromised because your food is become poison to you and then the gut is now compromised. So that ojas, when you take a good food that is wholesome, which is patya, the ojas will build. In ojas is the aspect of uh, you know body that is responsible for immunity. Last thing is uh, you know no question strength will come in and you will feel a lot more uh, abundant in your strength. On the contrary, if they take unwholesome food, it becomes the root for all diseases. 
So, the, you know, even though we are talking about gut health, we're, we are talking more in the emphasis on nutrition and how the gut and nutrition are so closely related. Next slide, please. So now we are going to talk about what are the things that are, uh, you know, from Ayurvedic point of view, um, there is this pranavata, which helps in swallowing the food and moving the food down. Uh, Samanavata, which helps to separate the food and uh, separate the nutrients from the waste products. Then Apanavata, that helps to eliminate the food. So there is a, in Upanishads, uh, which is later after, you know, the Vedas, the Upanishads say that these, uh, you know, Pancha, you know, Pranas, Pancha Prana, they are called Pancha Pranas, Prana, Udana, Samana, Vyana, and Apana. So these five are essential for the body's you know, normal and healthy functioning, but also regulating proper metabolism. So this prana to samana to apana, that is a very important you know, um, uh, flow. Sometimes people are stuck in prana in their metabolism. Sometimes they are stuck in samana. Sometimes we'll talk about it in a minute. That's what happened to our King Kong because he ate something that was stuck with one place of, of the gut and it never moved and it caused dire situations. And most of us do that, make so, such choices where the nutrition is just focused on one aspect of the gut. Then Pachaka Pitta is the major transformative Pitta that is responsible for Agni. Lastly, Ranjaka Pitta, which is coloring the bowel, coloring the stools, coloring the urine, that's what it does. So these aspects, uh, if, if there are practitioners out there listening to this, we are going to talk about these three vatas and then the two pittas. These are the major things. And also we have last one that is clear the kakapha, which is responsible for keeping the gut lubricated. So all these are important for gut health. Next slide, please. So let's go to what happens if we consume the food or nutrition without paying attention, driven by our emotions, not having a good attitude towards our food. There's a concept of reptilian being, you know, in, in uh, uh, modern neurobiology, uh, this aspect is now faded away. We'll talk about it later when we have Q&A se sections. Uh, well, see, there is a part of the brain which is called as primitive brain. What it is responsible for is to have these um, instincts, natural, like, you know, food, um, uh, you know, like uh, recreation, things like, you know, which are very, very essential, breathing, things like that are coming from this part of the brain. Most of us, because of our attitude towards, you know, food, we, we consume food based on this part of the brain, it looks like, because we just, for the sake of eating, we eat the food. And uh, because we think that certain type of food is rich with nutrition, we eat that food. Uh, but never paying attention to the entire, you know, the requirement of the human being, rather than just thinking that certain food is essential for us. So that type of an attitude, the reptilian brain attitude, we should let go. That's why in Vedic system, also in Ayurveda, we respect the food. And there are certain actions even before consuming the food. That is the attitude. That means we say that we are offering the food and the food needs to be five elemental, you know, like five um, sense organ based consumption. That means you touch the food, you smell the food. So every aspect of the brain needs to be stimulated before you consume the food, because that's where the prana descends. If the prana is descending, if you have the entire, you know, head being involved, then there is a proper descent of prana to the, to the you know, uh, to the samana. Samana means in the gut and then apana to the elimination. So never, uh, you know, stay in a reptilian attitude where I'm hungry, I'm going to eat now. I'm not hungry, I'm not going to eat. Everybody is eating, I need to eat. It is the first thing that we need to change that when it comes to relation to food, we have to move to the higher centers from the reptilian brain. Next slide, please. So this is what I was talking about. The prana is the upper, uh, you know, the centers that regulate our, you know, need to eat. That is prana. Then once it is consumed, then we have samana that is in the, the GI tract, the upper GI, which, you know, our stomach, duodenum, liver, uh, you know, pancreas, where all the process of digestion and breaking down is taking place. That is the, um, the, the major part of agni. Then comes down 
to the apana where the separation separated base material is you know made into a, a excretable matter and then apana el eliminates it so these three that from higher center to the consumption consumption to elimination so what we are looking at is how to digest how to assimilate and how to excrete that's the you know gut health you know formula for for ayurveda next slide please and then that's what you started the slide you know your presentation with the three things correct prana for choosing the food that is digestible samana for the food that is assimilable and then apana for that food food that is excretable yeah mm -hmm. all right another interesting thing is when i was studying uh, ayurvedic medicine there was a, a this famous quote in in uh, uh, I, you know ashtangathadeyam um, this uh, textbook it says avashtambam purishasya that means there are there are three waste materials and these three waste materials one is the solid waste that is the the bowel the 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 water waste that is in two forms one is coming through the urine the third one is the sweat right and they define each function the, the function of the urine function of sweat function of you know uh, the bowel or the stools and it says clearly that stool is stools are responsible for bearing the strength of the body and also supporting the body first i said <laughs> what 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 is that what does it make makes that doesn't make sense to me because at that time we had very limited understanding of what the gut is capable of supporting the entire body nowadays we see that neuro endocrine psychobiology is all dependent on the gut right so think about how much strength it can you know support and bear the body by you know there are studies to show that the gut is responsible for brain health gut is responsible for you know like your adrenal health or thyroid health everything is you know based on the gut so the bowel we need to pay attention to the gut health you, how do we assess our gut is healthy is by constantly paying attention to our bowel movements so if there are issues with the bowel movement that says your strength and sustainability of the body is coming down which has been proven by the the gut biome which is the next slide please go ahead <clears throat> so human gut biome we know that it uh, the the overwhelming research that we have come across in the recent 10 years that the the gut biome is even larger than the human cells itself um so we have about a trillion cells in our body we have 10 times 10 of these organisms supporting and uh, living in our body so that's what we need to be mindful uh, that you know we are not just eating for ourselves we are eating for all these organisms and if you don't pay uh, you know clear attention these take advantage of it like sibo or h pylori are coming because you are eating not for yourself but for something else and uh, they are opportunistic they take the advantage of it and then the ama when the agni is not properly functioning the food instead of being broken down into nutrition it turns into what we call as ama and everybody who is knows about ayurveda will know about ama because ama is the first step for generating a metabolic disease so this ama is what supports this organisms to leave their normal you know function and then they become uh, you know like higher they what what we call as dysbiosis dysbiosis in the sense the amount of bacteria that needs to be there in one one part of the gut becomes proliferant and then it starts migrating from where it should be to another place so that type of you know conditions also we see in ayurveda i mean in in uh, practice ayurvedic practice so gut biome is something that um, we ayurveda addresses very uh, you know um, uh, clearly in terms of not working with the the bacteria or the, the the lichens or the viruses or whatever that is present it doesn't pay attention to them it says that make sure that your diet is good make sure that your metabolism is good make sure that your gut is you know eliminating is is good then the gut biome automatically becomes healthy so next slide please so as i said this is a you know they stimulate our you know um, intestinal walls the enteric metabolism the enteric metabolism uh, is capable of signaling the brain like you know the cytokines that are you know necessary for immune response are generated in the gut 
the, the uh, brain, you know, like uh, cholecystokinin or serotonin, these are the precursors for all of, the, all of these, um, you know, neuro, uh, you know, transmitters are present in the gut, right? So one of the studies which is mind boggling is that there was a scientist who studied the gut, um, you know, the neuro, neuro, neurology uh, in some subjects, it's, this is in Spain, and he compared their guts after 30 years and those who had small changes in their gut neuro, neurology had, uh, you know, developed inflammatory brain disease like dementia or, so gut has a, such an important role to play in the, the overall well-being and we need to pay attention to this, how the gut bacteria or gut biome can be, um, you know, kept healthy and enriched. Next slide, please. So there is a concept of Pitta Dharakala, which I just want uh, our you know, audience to pay attention to here. So Pitta Dharakala means gut biome somewhat, you know, I, I correlate to, there's no correlation in the classical textbooks. <laughs> Please don't take that as a direct translation. This is my interpretation. So Pitta Dharakala, the uh, Kala means anything that separates. So there needs to be a clear separation between the nutrition that is coming in, that is going into the lymphatic system, that is you know, supplying the nutrition to the entire body, to what remains inside the gut. You cannot take everything. So there is a clear separation, dhatu antar mariyada. That means the, um, between the two tissues, between the two organs, between the two you know, organ systems, there is a separation. Blood cannot come in the urinary system. Your urine cannot go to you know, the uh, sweat system. There is a di very different, uh, you know, um, not, not different, differentiation of uh, you know, systems. There is a, you know, Pitta Darakala, there is a separation of these, um, you know, um, so-called gut supportive, uh, you know, mechanisms that are happening inside the gut and we call it as Pitta Darakala. In Ayurveda, we have specific herbs, specific, you know, um, sp spices, diet choices. In a minute, I'll talk about what is the diet choice that we want to make to enrich our gut, back, you know, gut biome or in general gut function um, that will address this how the gut uh, becomes absorbable and becomes enriched with the um, you know, gut, uh, gut bacteria. Next slide, please. So the Purusha Dharakala, this is the last aspect. So we talked about the Agni, then we talked about the, the Pitta Dharakala, that means that, that which absorbs. Agni breaks down, then the Pitta Dharakala you know, absorbs. And then Purisha Dharakala, which is again, like we're talking about the same aspect that we started off with, digest, assimilate, and excrete. So Purisha Dharakala is the aspect of the lower GI that is that has the liver as it's one of the organs and then the intestines as the other organ that regulates the process of elimination. That's because liver has been chosen very nicely by our ancient sages because it is the one which is responsible for coloring the stools and also maintaining a healthy gut you know, biome uh, or gut bacterial uh, colonies. Antra, because that is the organ, the intestines or the organs where the stools get formed, right? So the differentiation from nutrition and waste product is the function of uh, Purusha Dharakala. So gut health, not only depends just on the breaking down of nutrition, but also assimilation that is very much dependent on the layer of the gut that is, uh, you know, like we call it as Pitta Dharakala. And then the layer of the gut or the, in, in the extent of the gut that is absorbing the you know, nutrition and eliminating the waste product. All three are important. Again, going back to digest, assimilate, excrete. Next slide, please. So this is what I was talking earlier. This was a study that was done in UCLA, the neurobiology of stress. So if we look at that's one aspect, okay, we are eating, choosing, uh, we are very mindful, attentive to what we are eating. We are also looking at whether we, the, the gut is, uh, you know, um, having good back, you know, gut bacteria, we are, we are taking probiotics, et cetera. That's again, one part of the, the partial truth. The, another aspect is the mind itself. So there's no question in Ayurveda, mind plays a one, you know, like the major, um, um, you know, aspect or, or control mechanism of our gut, bi you know, biology. So gastrointestinal biology is dependent on the neurobiology. Stress 
is the factor that makes us make wrong choices, but also disrupts the gut itself. So what we say is, if we are stressful, the prana gets affected. If prana gets affected, upon, uh, samana, the digestive uh, type of you know, vata, and then the apana, all three get affected. So we need to think about how can we I mean, disconnect from the stress when we are consuming food. That's why there are prayers, there is breathing exercises that help us to disconnect. If there are stress factors influencing us, disconnect them, nullify them, and then go into the diet choice and eating process. Next slide, please. So the major effects of stress on the gut, gut, you know, gut physiology, there will be visceral, you know, um, increase in the visual perception. Then the gastrointestinal motility will be affected. That means the peristalsis that is normally moving, the vata that controls it will get disrupted. Then the absorption, there is um, sometimes even permeability change inflammation in the gut, all that will happen when the stress is involved. So um, physical aspect, when somebody comes to you asking about how to take care of the gut, you address the physical aspect, but you also give them a lot more emphasis on stress and it's, you know, how to relieve themselves from stress when consuming food. Next slide, please. So supporting the Agni will, nothing, will be nothing but Pachana, that is Deepana. Deepana means igniting the Agni. Pachana, digesting the food, and if there is any un unwanted, you know, um, um, toxic material, you break it down. And vata anulomana, anulomana, the word anulomana, I don't want to overwhelm all our listeners. I know that these terms will be like, oh my gosh, what is he talking about? Deepana, the word deepana means you increase the metabolism. Pachana means you break down all the nutrients and even the waste products properly. Anulomana means you help the gut to move downwards rather than being stuck in one part of the one part of the you know uh, GI tract or the gut tract. Okay, next slide, please. Now comes so, the fun part, I think. The, what <laughs> what we you can all understand. <laughs> yeah. So there are uh, herbs that Ayurveda has uh, long recommended. Um, we we have um, uh, Musta, Chitraka, and Vidanga. These three. Musta is nut grass, uh, Chitraka is, uh, is, is also called as plumbago um, uh, or pennywort. Um, so, the, and then Vidanga, uh, another uh, Malabar, uh, you know, nut. So these three are considered to be great for pushing the vata down and increasing the acne. Musta, that is Cypress rotundus, Chitraka, Plumbago zelanica, and then the last one is Vidanga, which is Umbilica ripes. Commonly available here in the US, most of the websites do sell them. And then you can you know, start taking them. They also have an action on, um, ab, you know, if there is abnormal gut bacteria, they try to balance them out, okay? So these three together, Musta, Chitraka, and Vidanga are called Tri Mada. Tri Mada means that which is calming, which is, you know, like almost like tranquilizing the gut, okay? So when we become stressful, when we become agitated, the gut also becomes very hyper and, and, and sensitive. These three are capable of calming the gut down and helping to keep the gut bacteria healthy and eliminate the waste products effectively. Then the other two are the spices, which everybody knows, fennel and the wild celery seeds, which is also called as ajwain. So these two are excellent for increasing the agni itself. So what I would do is, if I'm healthy, if not, ha I don't have any issues with my gut, I will chew ajwain right before the meals um, and uh, uh, the um, fennel after the meals. That's why if you go to any you know, Indian restaurants, what they do is they give you fennel at the end of the meal. That's to make sure that you don't uh, have any burden or you know, um, residue of food that you have eaten that turns into a possible ama or undigestible material. Then the last three are called trikatu, the, that is ginger, long pepper, and black pepper. These three are trikatus, which help us to not only increase the agni, but also make sure that we don't have ama inside the gut. So um, if we have, if somebody is experiencing ama, um, like having bloating, gas, not able to eliminate properly, you know, these herbs can be always consult your Ayurvedic practitioner, don't experiment by yourself. I'm just giving you so that you can research this, learn about them, 
the dosing, the amount that how to be taken, hot water, honey, etc., should be given by an Ayurvedic practitioner. Okay, just for educational purposes, I'm giving you the list. Next slide, please. And these are common common spices that helps the gut motility. So ajwain is the same one, ajamoda, uh, which is wild celery seeds or bishop um, seeds. Um, uh, it's um, uh, you know, tiny um, seeds, which are very pungent and rich with oil. Then we have hing, which is uh, a resin from Ferula sephotida. This is a, uh, a plant that is uh, the excre I mean, the, the exudate of this plant is dried out and it's commonly used in, in Ayurvedic, I mean, in Indian cuisine as well. And it helps to move the water down. The last one is salt, you know, healthy salt, especially Himalayan salt can help the gut to become more um, you know, um, uh, normally mobi mo mobile. That means the peristalsis becomes normal. Then cumin, black cumin, uh, and the the um, fennel. So cumin, black cumin, and fennel can be made into a tea, and that can be taken. And then the last one is garlic. Garlic is such great, um, you know, spice uh, to be taken for vata. If you have a lot of gas, bloating, etc., you can definitely do garlic as part of your meal. And next slide, please. So then uh, we have some spices here, I mean, the herbs here for stagnation, for clearing the stagnation in the cells, like working with the apanavata, so to push things down. So haritaki is one of the king herbs in Ayurveda, which is part of Trifala too. And uh, that we are using haritaki sometimes. Aragvada is another herb, which is called cassia fistula, which is again, a wonderful herb to move things down. But I, as, as I said earlier, please consult an Ayurvedic practitioner rather than experimenting with yourself with, with these herbs. The most harmless and which you can try will be Trifala because Trifala is such a you know, mild uh, gut formula that not only increases the Agni, but also helps to mobilize the gut and eliminate the toxins. You can try Trifala, which, is, which includes Haritaki as well, but Amalaki and Vibhitaki. Um, then we have uh, the Markandika, which is uh, Senna, which is a major drastic cleanser. Again, you need to be very careful when taking them. They're also, some of them are habit forming, like Senna should not be taken continuously to eliminate. Last one is Avipatika powder, which is a milder form of, uh, you know, cleanse. Includes mainly the uh, Trivrut, which is Operculina Tarpetam. It's a, it's a uh, a, a wine, the, the stem of which is a mild laxative that is also used. So elimination is uh, one of the key factors and these are the herbs that help with, the, help with the elimination. Next slide, please. So the diet that can be consumed for enriching the gut biome, gut function, anything that Ayurveda has ever recommended, this is from Charaka Samhita. He says that shali, that is rice, sheshtika, the shali sheshtika, the rice that goes in 60 days, if not available, basmati rice can be taken. Basmati rice that is not polished, you know, ideally brown rice or semi-polished rice. Mung bean, Himalayan salt, amalaki fruit, barley, ghee, meat of the arid animals and raw honey. And then the rainwater is considered to be the factors that are recommended for all body types for all health recovery purposes, and also for the, the, the you know, um, uh, all through the year, all through year, you can, can, you know, consume this. So he says this, Pachanityam Prayunjita. So if you use it every day, they will not generate a disease. Ajatanam Vikarana Manupatti Karantayat. So he says the diseases that are, you know, where the doshas are going out of balance, when you take this type of a diet, it can balances the prana, apana, prana, samana, and apana. It balances the, you know, the, the uh, mechanism that is, you know, brain-gut relation. All that will be, you know, beneficial when you take this type of a diet. So this is the take-home point here. In some form or the other, we should use this diet uh, to enrich our, uh, you know, gut. Next slide, please. So we're switching to yoga asanas. Um, I see questions coming up. If uh, if the audience can wait uh, for for our, you know, we'll be taking questions pretty pretty soon. Yeah. So we, yes, please. Okay. So the the uh, what I did is here. This is again my interpretation. Those people who have you know very um, challenging time in relating to their food, like they become they see something, they immediately have to consume it. Like there's a chocolate, they have to consume. 
there is cheese i am cheese immediately so that type of an attitude when people have they have to think about their reptil reptilian brain to be toned right so we have all these asanas that are chosen from the you know yoga sutras bhujangasana which is again a reptile um uttana parishishtasana which is um you know like the flying lizard uh, you know pose which is a which is again a reptile makarasana means um crocodile pose so all these poses kraunchasana is um uh, crane pose mayurasana is the um uh, peacock pose uh, then this this type of asana kurma is the turtle pose these poses will shift your you know mind and attitude towards the food from reptilian to more a mindful and a um, you know an attitude that is very important for choosing the food next slide please and these are from the bihar school of yoga where i graduated from um as a you know a yoga teacher they have this uh, satyananda saraswati who's the the fountain head of uh, bihar school of yoga he said that you know the our ancient people did the grinding of uh, of uh, the um you know grains by using the stone grinder he called it as chakki chalan uh, so th 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 by just doing that your agni will automatically become you know uh, encouraged and he used to say, say that the human being was never designed to sit on a chair with the legs hanging down never he was always saying that we need to squat or sit on our sits bone with our legs stretched out or legs folded that will pull in a lot of blood into the gut and that will make the gut uh, you know very um, rich and healthy with with uh, with the blood supply so this chakki chalan is one among them next one please you can look at these um, you know um Uh, pictures or read about them on internet it's all over the place on the internet rowing the boat nauka sanchalan which which is like using the abdominal muscles to you know bend forwards and backwards so it's all working towards the abdominal core muscles next one please this is called namaskarasan so you uh, bend forwards and then i mean extend your uh, sitting in a squat posture very interesting so stops all the blood flow to the 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 lower limbs the popliteal arteries are blocked the 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 uh, external iliac arteries are blocked and then when you compress here the the um, brachial arteries are blocked when you do that all the blood from the extremities pours into the gut so when do you do this not after eating you will do it in the morning so that your entire gut process is you know streamlined during the day so this is also one of the postures which you are looking on the, the on the right side is also called malasan in some you know in in some uh, you know schools of uh, yoga next one please and this is also vai nishkarnasan where you you squat and then you bend you get up and then again squat so this is another type of uh, uh, asan that he used to say vata is eliminated then uh, the release bloating and gas next one please and then this is uh, you know the uh, act of chopping the wood see all these um, postures or all these so called then physical work involved squatting or sitting on the um, on the on the sits bone right and um, so this is very interesting that we have to adopt this type of a uh, you know some posture some part of part of the day when you're sitting in front of the computer for a long time just bring your legs up and that will give you a tremendous amount of you know relief from gas and bloating next one please so the breathing techniques we cannot forget anulomana anu, this these are again everybody knows about these nowadays because ayurveda yoga has become such uh, prevalent practice anulom and vilom type of uh, breathing then purna kumbhak and rechak that means using the abdomen for full filling and then holding it and then exhaling and holding it where you are contracting the the abdominal muscles to squeeze out any stagnation in the gut uh samavritti pranayam that is equal breathing the you inhale for four counts hold for four counts exhale for four counts and then again hold it for four counts and then when you exhale it so that type of a breathing is also very good for controlling the uh you know compulsive behavior in eating nadi shodhan that is alternative nostril breathing and bastrika which is the bellow breath where you it's almost like breath of fire but you use you use passive inhalation and forceful exhalation that's also another method that helps us to kindle the agni uh, and help the the gut to be more um, you know uh, receptive to food next one please 
we're, we're done. It's about <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that, that, that was a very informational session, uh, Vedyaji. Um, I, we, we learned so much. Uh, so uh, what we want to do is we want to open it up for questions. Um, so let's see. All right. So somebody's asking, sir, Ajmoda is celery plant. That's what the question is. I think you um, talked about celery, celery Earth. but uh, it is wild celery because celery is different. Wild celery is different. It also goes by name Bishop Seeds. Um, the, the botanical identity is cup. Uh, um, Captico spermum ami. So that's what is the bot botanical name. Of it. So you can you can even just write ajwine. Nowadays it's available online. Many you know uh, websites do sell it. Okay, we have a few questions coming up. Well, um, all right. Um, well, before um, I'm going to stop the screen share. Before I stop the screen share, if you have any questions, you can reach us at the email. Email is written on our last slide and WhatsApp number as well. Let us know the feedback on the on this session. Somebody saying excellent, informative session. Thanks a lot. Oh, thank you. And uh, we have a few other questions coming up. Let me just see. Uh, somebody's asking. I'm suffering from eczema. How can I heal it in Ayurveda? Well, these are educational <laughs> sessions. Uh, if you want to comment, whether yeah. it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, the, since it is, uh, we are on the topic of gut health. Gut health, and so what Ayurveda considers is the skin and the mucous membrane are very closely connected. So the gut inside, if it is you know irritated, the skin gets irritated as well. So in a way, if you can pay attention to your diet choices and you know sometimes eating healthy fats which reduce the eczema i don't know what kind of eczema this person has if it's a dry eczema then it's considered to be vata so lubricating good oil good fat can be beneficial to the skin sure but i would and, de and I definitely recommend go to an ayurvedic practitioner yes. because that's what uh, i was going to say that uh, you're welcome to contact us and we'll put you in touch with that uh, you have our email so but this is an educational session we're just giving overall information we have another another question somebody's yeah. saying i've eaten a lot of antibiotics in my past couple of years i have mm. constipation for days and i often have coughing at night while sleeping after dinner how mm -hmm. to treat mm -hmm. this I guess consult with an Ayurvedic physician, but <laughs> yeah, just uh, we will give a general because uh, people yeah. there are a lot of people having this type of uh, issue. Uh, we'll just give a general, uh, you know, um, educational answer for that. Um, so when people take uh, the antibiotics for a long time, there is definitely a burden on the gut biome richness, what we call as rich gut biome reflects, you know, healthy digestion. So the, how do we, uh, and I, I, when I uh, think about an Ayurvedic practitioner, a good Ayurvedic practitioner is a probiotic uh, agriculturist. He, he knows exactly what needs to be put. Most of us, what they do, do we do, is okay, we have taken the antibiotic, let's take some probiotics to enrich the gut. That's not the real story here. The real story is the, the if you imagine the, the gut, I mean the probiotics to be seeds, if you put them, if the soil or the bed is not prepared, then everything just goes through, right? It doesn't do any much you know, benefit. So first you need to cultivate uh, in a way that the entire gut becomes um, enriched, right? Healthy. So for that, first start with you know um, diet that is um, you know diversified, um, mostly uh, going towards uh, plant-based diet. The plant-based diet will create that um, bed. Then you can consume um, like sauerkraut or you know, even like uh, some amount of miso or you know, drinking some uh, probiotic drinks. So that will help to make the things get, get into the... In Ayurveda, we say that um, the gut bacteria is to be consumed in the form of food rather than something that is prepared. Like, uh, I don't know about this person, if they have gut, you know, you know lactose sensitivity, if they don't have it, 
then they can take yogurt or buttermilk when, which is great for uh, you know supporting the gut bacteria and uh, that would help and thank you okay yeah. so we have um, well we have a comment saying thank you so much a very informative session which okay. i will try to incorporate for my ulcerative colitis and for all my family oh That's thank it. you <laughs> all right any other questions we are at the hour we typically yep. um have um before i um wrap up i just want to call for the any other questions before i wrap up before we wrap up okay i see one more question thank you all right i think <laughs> thank you so much uh it was a very informative session um before i close uh, would you like to say any final comment or final thing to your viewers um i think uh, if you take care of the gut and you, you will <laughs> live a long healthy life uh, and that's what i wish that through ayurveda we can you know spread this knowledge of how to take care of the gut and and live a long healthy life that's excellent i love the way you explained in detail on the you know fundamentals of the digestion and then went on to the herbs most of the time people just go to the solution without really making um uh, viewers like us a layman understand the problem why it happens so, so it was a beautiful beautifully guided session thank you so much you. um namaste and i'm going to sign off for the viewers please let us know your feedback i think you are letting us know your feedback let us know what, the, what are the topics you like to see and please help us spread the word of ayurveda and yoga thank you thank you namaste namaste